Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. Wanted to uh, give you a little uh, peek inside some of the more popular yokes on the market right now. And probably the most popular is the Logitech slash Cytec, used to be called Cytec, Pro Flight Yoke. And the reason being is it's $160. And these other two are high-end yokes and they go for closer to a thousand. So um, volume-wise, you know, the, the Cytec slash Logitech is going to be the market leader, but it certainly isn't the best yoke out there. But it may be the best yoke for you because I wouldn't recommend not eating to buy one of the high-end yokes, but if you can afford it, certainly the high-end yokes are the better way to go. Now, I'll throw a disclaimer in here. I have no idea what I'm talking about when I look inside these things. I'm clueless. I have never designed a yoke. I don't know how to design a yoke. Uh, so anything I say is from a... Um, noob level, a, a, a rudimentary level, I, I, I don't design yokes. So there's no need to email me and tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. Because I don't. I don't know what I'm talking about. I've never designed a yoke. I've never taken the cover off a yoke until today. So no need to email me and tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. Because I don't. I'm simply giving you a peek underneath the covers so you can see kind of how these things work on the inside and uh, hopefully that can help you, you know, understand why one costs more than the other. Okay, let's take a look at the Logitech, now known as, or previously known as Cytec, Pro Flight Yoke Internals. So one thing we'll, you notice right away is most of this stuff is plastic. And another interesting thing is I actually have the yoke upside down. So the bottom of the housing actually doesn't do anything other than really serve as a cover for the most part. One thing you'll notice is um, there's no evidence of ball bearings or any type of, of bearings in here. It looks like we just have a greased shaft that slides between um, some plastic, I don't know, openings for lack of a better word. We can also see that the tensioning uh, mechanism for right now I'm doing the roll is this spring here, which might be kind of hard to see from a top-down view, but it's a metal spring, not a bungee. And then for the in and out motion or the elevator axis, you see here we have this spring right there, which again might be a little difficult to see. Now um, everything in this yoke for the most part is plastic except the shaft and a couple of little select items, but for the most part um, it's all plastic. It does a really good job for what it sells for, which is about $160. But, uh, obviously, it's not going to last as long as something that contains more metal, and it's not going to be as smooth. Um, one thing that customers tend to complain about is when turning and moving the elevator axis at the same time, there's a tendency to bind and be kind of jerky. And if you notice here, I'm trying to be smooth. But I, I really can't. I'm kind of hesitating as I, as I move this axis while having it turned. While having it straight, the only place I really tend to hesitate, well, I hesitated a little bit right there, but is in the detent area. So that is the Cytec, now known as Logitech, Pro Flight Yoke Internals. Okay, so now we're taking a look at the PFC yoke. This is the beach yoke. I do believe all their yokes, which uh, are the, um, the Saab, the uh, Boeing, the Mooney, the beach, I believe the base is the same on all those and all they do is change out the yoke. But I'm compelled to let you know that um, it is made of cast aluminum it has a powder-coated finish, stainless steel, centerless ground, shaft, tubing, and then that is nickel-plated. And then it has front and rear self-aligning Thompson bearings, programmable Hall effect sensors with millions of cycles. And it has an aluminum powder-coated chassis and a machined rack gear system with, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Delrin guides. All right, so let's take a look at how the internals of this thing work. Um, of course
course you have the elevator access here. We don't have any hesitation like we had on the Logitech. Although it does get progressively harder to uh, move it as, you know, the more you deflect it. And I think that's, you know, pretty much expected. And you can see this bungee cord here in the center is what provides that resistance. Now the same bungee cord provides the re resistance on the roll axis. And then the roll axis is nice and smooth. And you might expect that if you've got it rolled and you try to push in or pull out the elevator axis that it would be harder, harder to do. But it actually isn't because this bungee, while it gets tighter, this one gets looser. And I cannot actually find a, a huge difference between you know, the resistance here and the resistance if I have it turned. Now the way the, um, the mechanism moves forward and back, you have this plate here that goes across and then it goes into a groove over here and I can't see what's inside of this groove. I'm not going to take that apart. It appears it just slides in that groove and of course you have the gear mechanism here that gear is what tells the sensor how far in or out you've pushed the yoke uh, elevator axis and when we turn it left and right the sensor for that I'm trying not to get in the way of the camera here um, it looks like it's underneath here so it's going to be underneath this bungee where you can't see it but the sensors, of course, are accurate. Uh, the main purpose of this video is just to show you how it works internally. This bungee, if you pull out and lift up, can be removed fairly easily. I do believe an end user could probably change it, although I don't know that the manufacturer supports that type of uh, change. And one more thing, uh, the, the chassis is much bigger, in my opinion, than it has to be. You have a lot of extra room over here and extra room over here and you actually have some extra room up here. And so um, my guess is when this yoke was originally designed, it had more internal parts and, that took up more room. And now as time has progressed, that sort of shrunk a bit. And now we have this extra space over here. So perhaps at some point PFC might put this in a smaller cabinet because it does appear they have the ability to do that. Okay, let's take a look at the Yoko yoke, and I will mention that it has a linear ball guide technology, dumbbell with aluminum alignment, and um, it has double, a double longitudinal course. Now, I don't know what all that means, but that's what's on the website. So let's look at how the internals of this thing kind of work. So um, it's a little more... I don't want to say, I guess, complicated than the PFC one to try to kind of figure out how things work, but it's not really that big a deal. Um, on the elevator axis, it goes along this sort of monorail type thing. If you've ever seen, if you've ever been to Disney World and seen the monorail, there's a, a rail here that this thing glides across. And I'm going to pull this all the way back so you can see that rail here and it just glides up and down that rail and it feels like there's some ball bearings in there and that may be that longitudinal thing that I mentioned earlier um, because it's a smooth movement it doesn't feel like you know that there's actual friction involved and again I, I think I mentioned this bungee here which also attaches over here is dedicated to providing the resistance for the elevator axis and the way that the yoke knows how far you've deflected it uh, on the elevator axis, you have this gear right here that turns, that's hitting these teeth, and it just basically turns, I believe, what's inside this little black unit here, and that tells it, you know, where it is on the elevator axis. Now on the aileron axis, um, that's kind of right here in your face. Um, you've got two bungees and well, by the way I believe these bungees could be changed fairly easily if they needed to although maybe not quite as easily as on the PFC because there's screws involved but as you turn this um, you can see this gear turns this gear which moves uh, whatever is inside this little blue device and that again tells it how far you've turned the aileron axis 
Now these wires you see running into the shaft here almost certainly have to do with the buttons on the top of the yoke. So that's what that is if you're kind of wondering. Um, and then, you know, you see that one of the things a little different than the PFC is really the whole mechanism moves forward and back, whereas on the PFC unit, this whole mechanism kind of stayed still and the shaft moved um, in and out. So that's an overview of the Yoko. So that's the internal workings of the three different yokes that we have here. And I want to reiterate that I've never designed a yoke. I've never taken the cover off a yoke until today. So the overview I gave you was based on a layman's view of things. Now I know more than the average person, but I do not design yokes and never have and probably never will. So I want to reiterate, I don't know what I'm talking about. Now, um, let's talk, give a, a kind of a, a roundup, a, a, an ending to this thing. So here you, you're at $1,000, here you're at $160, $70. And I like all of these yokes when used in the appropriate scenario. If you're a home user, you're working on a budget, it doesn't make sense to buy one of these high-end yokes if you're on a budget. Now I'm not saying all homeowners you know, shouldn't buy this, but if you're, you know, let's say you've got a budget of $2,000 to put together a flight simulator, including the computer, the monitors, the throttle, the pedals, the yoke, then it's probably not a good idea to spend $1,000 on a yoke because you're gonna run out of money. But if you're on the other end of the spectrum and you've, let's say, sunk five, $6,000 into um, a setup plus many, many man hours constructing something custom, then it would be silly to put $170 yoke into something as nice as that that you've created. So that's where you'd wanna be with one of these higher end yokes. And also, of course, if you're doing something commercial, um, you're putting something into a business, you're gonna use it in your business. You're gonna be doing flight instruction, charging for the flight time, or the simulator time, you know, that's where you're going to be up here with the uh, $1,000 yokes. So again, I like all of these yokes um, when used in the appropriate situation. And hopefully the information I provided can help you make an educated decision about how and, you know, how you can use these yokes and where you should use these yokes and when.